A familiar man appeared at the threshold, who introduced himself as Peter and whom Yvonne had met and chatted with today. He asked briefly how they were doing. Yvonne was puzzled and asked, Are you Peter? Natalia jumped up from her seat and asked Yvonne loudly, Peter, have you two met? To which she received a reply from him, Ah, uh, we happened to run into each other in the gallery, and a conversation started between us. She turned to the man and said this, Ha, huh, accidentally. When did they start calling you Peter, Mikhail Petrovich Lomonosov? Yvonne, too, from surprise at what he heard, turned to him and realized what she meant. Mikhail Lomonosov, is that really the main Lomonosov? Natalia said she warned him. But in the end, will he still stand his ground? She asked that he doesn't even feel guilty about Suyon. Chief Lomonosov replied that that was why he was now going to pay for his sins. Bullshit, Natalia objected. Watching their dialogue, Ivan questioned himself. He didn't understand what was going on at all. And why did he hear his mom's name in their conversation? This, Lomonosov gestured to Natalia that she should calm down, and he had no intention of listening to her. Then he walked over and shook Ivan's hand with the words, I think I can introduce myself properly now. Taking the young lad by the hand, Lomonosov declared as follows, I have missed you, my son. Lomonosov invited Ivan to continue the conversation at his house. The boy agreed. They were having tea in the living room. He had servants, too. The newly appeared father and son sat down opposite. Watching him drink his tea, Ivan wondered, the head of the Lomonosovs who is feuding with Caesar, is he seriously my father? After pondering his actions, he thought further. So far, I've only followed him because I have a case against him. He remembered how Natalia had tried with all her might to dissuade him from following Lomonosov. Natalia had been worried about him to the last. Yvonne remembered that this man is the reason he came to Russia, so they were destined to meet eventually. At the same time, he doesn't want Natalia to worry too much. His thoughts were interrupted by the owner of the house. You don't like black tea? Waking up, he replied, ah, like it. Then I guess you just didn't like this one. I'll tell them to bring another one. Lomonosov called out to his servant. But he was stopped by Ivan, who said he shouldn't. There was silence. There was a chill that permeated the air between them. Lomonosov smilingly spoke first. Your mother used to eat cookies immediately after one sip of black tea. I know, Ivan replied shortly. There was silence again. Lomonosov did not know what was the matter. After hesitating a bit, he continued the conversation. The reason, the reason I left you and your mother, Mikhail wanted to say. But Ivan interrupted him saying he didn't have to say anything. I'm not interested, Yvonne said, once upon a time. He had a lot of questions he wanted to ask his father when he met him. For example, why did you leave us? Why did you keep the truth about the mafia from your mom? All those words and questions were only in his head, accompanied by some memories. He had hardly any memories of him, so the burden he had to shoulder was small. But his mother had longed for his father all her life, and tormented by not knowing the reason for his passing, had finally let out her last breath. In his thoughts, Yvonne reasoned, I wanted you to feel at least some of the pain of loss that mom felt. I wanted to judge you for the way you acted. But, the point, mom's gone and I'm left with... He decided to fulfill his mom's last request, telling Lomonosov, I sought you out because of... That mom wanted to give you something. Suyan. The mobster jumped up abruptly from his seat. Now Yvonne spoke for his mom. I'm not mad at you. I was just wondering why you left me. Without finishing Suyon's words. But, Lomonosov said. Without looking up, Yvonne continued. If you loved me, to Lomonosov, an interesting pattern emerged. A part of Yvonne became strongly similar to his ex-wife, with the same facial expression and facial expressions. That's good enough for me, Yvonne continued to relay his mother's words. This shocked Lomonosov. I still love you were her last words. Tears began to drip onto the table. Ha! Huh. Mikhail Lomonosov cried. Without reacting to his father's crying, Ivan thought, This is the end of my business. I've done what I wanted to do and what I had to do. He remembers his mom. Mom's sadness that she was lonely to the very end will melt away. Michael wept inconsolably and apologized to his son. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't protect her. Ivan answered him briefly but gruffly. You have no need to apologize to me. You should apologize to your mother, who trusted you and waited until the very end. Do you hate me? Lomonosov finally asked. I used to, but it's gone, Ivan replied. I have no feelings left for you, he said with a calm face. Right, you're right. Mikhail barely spoke through tears. Rising from the couch, Ivan replied. Then I will go. Mikhail Lomonosov jumped up from his seat and shouted, 
What? Are you leaving already? Yvonne turned his head toward him and said, I only sought you out to relay Mom's words. And since I've accomplished my goal, it's time for me to leave. Chief Lomonosov wanted to stop him. P. Wait. He said Ivan was his only son, his kin. He realizes he has no right to say that, but says why not stay with him. Yvonne said he had no reason to do that and went already. The next second, the mobster grabbed his arm with the words, But you're... my son. Certain circumstances arose that caused me to have to leave you when you were still an infant. But I was unwilling to do so. Holding his son's hand, Lomonosov tells, The mafioso said that he realized that he had hurt him and Suyon a lot. That's why he asked to be recognized as a father, at least for now. To give him a chance to make up for what he had done. But the mafioso didn't notice the crushing of Yvonne's coat. We got along so well, didn't we? We talked about paintings, drank tea together. He recalled the last couple of hours he had spent with his son. He recalled spending the last couple of hours with his son. But Yvonne said he did not want any compensation. He took his father's hand off his arm and continued speaking. I didn't know you were my father then. Face. Voice. Age. I didn't know anything about you. And in particular, that you're from the mob. He looked at his father judgmentally and coldly. Yvonne lifted his outer garment and repeated that he was looking for him simply to hand over his mom's will. Nothing more. And said he didn't want anything from him. The young boy turned around and gave his father one last look. We won't see each other again. Have a nice day. After saying that, he rushed towards the door as his father stopped him. Po, wait. Wait a second. His father finally said. Yvonne froze for a second. The mobster agreed with his son and said this. All right, if you say so, I won't insist, but please. He leaned over a little, holding his son's hand and asked him to fulfill just one request of his. Lomonosov said that his birthday was coming up. He's going to have a reception at home. If Ivan attends it, he won't hold him back any longer. He, with tears in his eyes, expressed his last wish. I would like only once to hear congratulations from you. Will you fulfill my request? This puzzled Ivan, and he wondered, Why is he doing all this? He thought over his request. How to proceed? I don't want to agree, but Mom loved that man. Still, there's no reason for us to see each other anymore. It's a little awkward, but I think it would still be better from... But his thoughts were interrupted by his father's trembling hands clinging to him. Yvonne sighed and finally agreed to come to the appointment. This made Michael glow with happiness. He couldn't believe his son's words. Really? Thank you. Thank you. Stay here then. My birthday is only about a week away. I'll prepare a room for you. Yvonne tried to stop him, telling him not to. But he didn't hear him and shouted at the top of his voice through the house. Butler, prepare the finest apartments. Yvonne realized he couldn't hear him. The latter closed his eyes and thought, a week. And should he contact Caesar? He remembered their last meeting. No, we're so separated, aren't we? What am I going to tell him? Yvonne held his head, not knowing what to do. What should I do? Now he said the words aloud. There was a sound of thunder. The sky was dark and gloomy. Dimitri opened the door to the office, saying, Caesarek, what's up? I'm here to pick you up. But Caesar was more gloomy than the weather. He ignored his brother's appearance. One by one, thunderclaps brightened Caesar's study. He was pensive. Waving his bone, Dimitri pointed out Vaughn after the cigarette standing in the study and asked him how many he had smoked. Asked more later, he hadn't forgotten that today was the party in honor of the old fox's birthday. With a squeak, one hand resting on his brother's desk, Dimitri muttered, How are you? Ludmila is trembling with fear. And Yura even went to a fortune teller to find a way to please you. Caesar got up from his seat and simply told his cousin to fuck off. He was pensive. Where could he have gone? It's been a whole week. I can't get in touch with him. His entourage doesn't know where he might be either. He thought, remembering how they had gone to visit Nikolai. Walking around the room, he still couldn't understand. How come there's absolutely no information about him? Normally I could find out everything even if I had to try somewhere. But now it felt like someone was hiding him on purpose. Pondering this, he further. Don't tell me I might have missed some strange movements within the organization. Could it be that Dimitri... At the same moment, Dimitri interrupted his thoughts with, Maybe it was that sexy lawyer that pissed you off so much. Caesar froze. Watching him, Dimitri cheered up. Oh, looks like I'm right. He continued to ask his brother provocative questions. You've become strange. You don't come to the club at all. And when it comes to the lawyer, you completely lose your mind. Why are you acting like this? Did you two break up? Shut up! Caesar answered him briefly. Look how sensitive you are. Uh, Dimitri closed his eyes. His brother continued to tease him. 
You two still haven't slept together, have you? No wonder. He would hardly be able to walk normally after you. Caesar, without turning to him, calmly replied, I told you to shut up. Smiling, Dimitri continued to talk nonchalantly. Though no, if he has great technique, he could probably be fine even after you. How does he taste? Better than the guys at the club? He's unbelievable. With a face like that, his hole must have received quite a few guests. When he opened his eyes, he found a gun pointed at his face. It was Caesar. He gave his brother one last warning. Shut your mouth, you're told. The one only smiled and noted that he had hit the bullseye. Putting away his brother's gun, Dimitri speculated, I wonder if this puppy knows you're so serious. The origin of your behavior is because you can't contact him, isn't it? Didn't he just run away? Caesar objected that there was no such thing. Really? You're so sure he won't run away from you? Dimitri asked him. Caesar started to reply, Of course. But suddenly I remembered Yvonne's last words as he left. He'd said Caesar was a jerk. Now he was hesitating. Dimitri asked him again, You don't seriously believe him, do you, Caesar? Taking his hands off the gun, the brother said, Trust. That word doesn't fit you at all. Dimitri looked at him with a caustic smile and offered Caesar a wager. Quite simple. I'm betting on that lawyer betraying you and running away. The bet is pride. He explained the terms of the wager. Caesar said it was nonsense. Dimitri asked, Why? If you trust him so much, isn't the wager a spit bet for you? That's something for Caesar to ponder. The cousin hummed and said the bottom line would always be the same. Dimitri's next words were painful to him, but he didn't show his feelings to anyone. You will be abandoned, Caesar. Yvonne woke up. He hasn't been given any peace all week. He has his servants wash him in the shower. He gets a facial and spa treatment. He starts complaining out loud. No, it's this person's birthday, so why do I have to sparkle? He looked at the stack of expensive gifts he got from his father. He got mad when I asked him not to buy me presents. He distrusts Yvonne's words so much that he took all his stuff before his birthday. Even his cell phone. Uh, at least I can get back after dinner tonight. He leaned back a little. In the end, I couldn't even get in touch with that asshole. Is he... okay? His heart beat faster at the thought of him. A butler entered the room with clothes. Your evening attire. Yvonne thanked him. He picked up his clothes and thought further. Yeah. It's no big deal. I can come back after today. He started to get dressed while simultaneously thinking. And once I get back, we'll figure it all out. It's the evening of the birthday party. Around the Lomonosov mansion, there are cars everywhere. People are gathering for a party. The street is very noisy. Caesar also came to the party, wearing a sumptuous milk-colored suit. He was greeted, Welcome, King. He only looked at them and went further inside. Caesar was handsome today. There were a lot of people gathered today. Next to him, of course, was Dimitri, who managed to comment on the situation. Yeah, the old fox is still a fox. There's quite a crowd here. He grabbed one of the champagne glasses and quickly slipped it into his sullen brother's hand, a smile on his face warning him. Okay, I'm going to go gather info. He made one last attempt to cheer him up. Come on, keep your head up, Caesar Kick. Got it? He exhaled heavily in response, thinking that he had no time for such evenings. He was looking at every possible option, where Yvonne could be. He was in the back of his mind where he hadn't checked yet. What were the odds that someone was lying? Maybe he should have caught everyone and tortured them after all. But what if even that didn't get results? Then it's true. He remembered his brother's words. You will be abandoned, Caesar. He closed his eyes for a moment and denied it. No, that just can't happen. First of all, once the party is over, I'll search his entire entourage, he thought. But suddenly he bumped into someone and they apologized to him. Caesar turned toward him and saw. The one he'd been looking for all week. Yvonne. He too was shocked by the man he saw. Zesar, Iwan said with horror. The champagne in Caesar's hand fell to the ground and shattered. Yvonne didn't expect such a reaction and fussed. What are you doing all of a sudden? Are you okay? Yvonne continued to worry about him and asked, Did you hurt yourself? But why are you here? Without letting him finish his sentence, Caesar approached him. He placed his hand behind Yvonne's neck, as he usually did, and mouthed happily, Ha! They looked each other straight in the eyes. Yvonne called out to him, Caesar! But another man called out to them, Young master! He notified them that Mr. Lomonosov was going to give a speech. The man said that he might start looking for you, so told him not to leave the place. Yvonne replied to him that he understood. Caesar grabbed him by the shoulders and asked, Sir? He furiously approached him and asked, Young master, what is the meaning of this? You've been here all this time. Been here? With a smile, trying to explain to him, Yvonne removed his hands. It's, you know, there's such a thing. But suddenly Caesar shouted, Do you know how I have been looking for you? 
Clutching his shoulders, he continued to shout threateningly grimly. I've turned everything over, looked under every rock, and you didn't even call. I thought you disappeared without a trace, so why are you here like this? Do you even know what this place is? Caesar couldn't contain himself. People whispered and stared at them, and Yvonne tried to calm him down. I'm sorry, but I really had my reasons. Did you see everything? Nothing happened, did it? Taking Caesar's hand, he turned and tried to lead him away from here. Ah, yes, let's go out now. Yvonne thought, if I tell him right here that I'm Lomonosov's son, I can't even imagine what might happen. Even if I don't recognize our kinship, it won't make it go anywhere. Too many chances for misunderstandings, he thought inwardly. First, we need to calm down and talk calmly. While Yvonne was pondering, Caesar took his hand and told him to let go. Tell me, why, you, here? After those words, Caesar's face went blank. Yvonne was a little startled by him. Now, Caesar demanded. Caesar, calm down a little. Listen to me, Yvonne said, but suddenly the lights went out in the hall. Lomonosov appeared on stage and the stage sparkled. Dear guests, he thanked the audience loudly. First of all, I apologize to those I made worry about my health. I also thank everyone for coming here despite being busy. He had a glass of champagne in his hand. He raised it and continued to say, It seems that today's birthday will be more meaningful. There is a man here today whom I would like to introduce to you, he said proudly. Wait, really? Before Yvonne could think of what was coming next, Caesar smiled evilly, realizing what the matter was. I present to you my only son, Yvonne Jong. The spotlight shone directly on top of Yvonne. People turned back to see who it was. People were shocked by what they heard. They whispered, and there was a loud noise in the room. Smiling and raising his champagne glass higher, Mikhail Lomonosov explained for them. Because of some dangers, he grew up in another country, however, henceforth and henceforth he will live with me. Next to his son, he saw Caesar and added, Oh, just as well, Sir Gives heir is here. Glaring at him, Lomonosov proudly declared, Please be a good match for my son. Tsar! Lomonosov finished in chief. Caesar frowned. He didn't like this. Mikhail Lomonosov staggered forward, straight toward his son. He walked over to Yvonne and whispered in his ear, Thanks for coming to Dad's party like I asked you to. Yvonne stiffened because of the shock. Yvonne now shouted, This was not our agreement. Tell the Norms people immediately. But no sooner had he finished than the crowd descended on him with inquiries. My goodness, Lomonosov's son? Really? They asked on all sides if he would be the official heir, and also asked where and what he had been doing all this time. He tried to stop them, asking them to wait. Yvonne looked at Lomonosov. He was beaming and smiling, replying that could there be a better gift than being able to finally meet his son and be with him. People kept asking questions, but Yvonne was no longer listening. He was confused. Yvonne somehow dodged the curious people and decided to get away from there. He was looking for Caesar. On the threshold, the chief Lomonosov called out to him, wanting to stop him. But Yvonne did get out of there. He went outside and regretted everything. He reasoned aloud, I'm an idiot since I wanted to really congratulate him normally, and yet calling him father? Yvonne suddenly froze and hesitated. He realized what Lomonosov's plan was. Father. Did he want me to think of him that way? A man suddenly appeared in front of him, and he spoke first to get Yvonne's attention. Just because you were there? Do you even know what that means, to me? I don't know, Caesar asked sternly, unemotional. Yvonne wondered, what the... But it's not like that at all. And why was I suddenly so calm once I heard his voice? He made no excuses to Caesar. It's just as you heard it. The next words are definitely not what Caesar expected to hear. Mikhail Lomonosov is my father. This reaction of his made even Yvonne himself scared. Caesar was intensely angry. So getting closer to me was your original goal? Caesar asked a question that caught Yvonne by surprise. The latter interjected. In a cold tone, the interlocutor continued to say, How was it? Was it fun watching me try to survive despite your father's best efforts? It was all right, wasn't it? Yvonne shouted back at him. Hey, hold your horses. You're the one who came after me first. After saying those words unexpectedly to Yvonne, Caesar grabbed him and he demanded to explain himself to him. He looked at him with fierce and embittered eyes and added, Say anything at all in such a way as to convince me, because I'll believe anything. To say anything, Yvonne asked himself. But he decided that it wouldn't change the fact that he was Lomonosov's son. Now he gave Caesar the following. I didn't keep it from you on purpose. And these words, they took him by surprise. Rather, I haven't had a chance to say, that's all. Yvonne ended the dialogue with that. Caesar got angry. You, he voiced and grabbed Yvonne by the throat, squeezing him harder and harder, not letting him breathe. Yvonne assumed he was going to kill him. He kept panting further. Caesar answered nothing and choked him further. 
but then he did push Yvonne away. He turned his back to him and remained silent. The man fell to the ground and began to catch his breath. Yvonne looked up startled and called out to him, trembling and holding his neck. Cesar! When he was done talking, he was gone. He was gone. The door slammed. It was Caesar. He had come home. His cousin noticed this and exclaimed, It's Caesar. Dimitri said hello to him, and the man didn't say anything back to him or even react. Caesar looked sullen, clearly in no mood. He didn't even look in his brother's direction. That startled Dimitri. He flinched. He wondered if something had happened at dinner. Caesar walked into his office and stopped at his desk. Dimitri cautiously walked into the office and asked what was wrong as he looked miserable. Caesar only asked briefly, Business? Dimitri made a thoughtful face and pronounced, I was just about to report back, but the atmosphere doesn't seem to be right for it. Smiling casually, Dimitri said the following, By the way, the lawyer who's been following you around like a glued man, you haven't seen him, have you? Caesar looked at him threateningly and told him to get out. Even more frightened, the brother replied, I, I got it, I'm gone, I'm gone, and shrugged his shoulders. He walked out of the office and exhaled, saying it was the first time he'd seen him so scary. Then he called someone to find out what happened. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to know something. Find out what happened at Lomonosov's dinner. What? I was shocked to hear the news. He couldn't even believe it. What did he say? Really? The voice on the other end of the line said, Actually, Michael named that lawyer as his heir. Oh, that's what this was about, Dimitri realized. He ended the call and said out loud, Really? I thought some treachery was his max, but he was Lomonosov's son all this time. He smiled. That was useful information. Meanwhile, Ivan was at home fidgeting in bed in his room. He asked grimly, had this bed always been this hard? With a creak of the bed, he sat up and thought, eh? He thought about his last encounter with Caesar. Maybe there was something else he should have said. Worst of all, there was nothing left to say. He had choking marks on the back of his neck. He was in yesterday's clothes and he hadn't been home for a long time. Well, in his house. Remembering Caesar's last look, Yvonne was sure he definitely hated him now. While washing his face, he thinks about it further. How infuriating. I was going to get everything sorted out sooner and come back, wasn't I? Yvonne didn't want him to find out like this. His thoughts were interrupted by the knocking of the door. It was his grandmother. She asked if he was busy. She said he had a visitor. What? He said, really? He hoped it was Caesar coming for him. Someone stepped out into the hallway and headed toward him. There was a knock at the door. It was... Mikhail Lomonosov with the words, Did you sleep well, son? Smiling. They made their way out of the house to the gallery. That's where they first met. Lomonosov told him, I come here when I have a lot of thoughts in my head. They looked at paintings and images of art. But Yvon was not happy about the encounter. He just kept silent. I guess you're still mad at me. My father made a guess. Isn't it obvious? You've had it all your own way. His father replied that he was just afraid he would leave him too. You kept saying you were going to leave, so I had to go to extreme measures. Overdone, I guess. I didn't mean to deceive you, Mikhail Lomonosov explained to his son. Finally, he apologized. It was a shock to Ivan. He certainly hadn't expected it. Besides, I wanted to get you, Lomonosov said, and Ivan interjected. Get? You have a very good reputation. When I took you in, I realized that you are a far more outstanding young man than rumor has it that you are. So, I would be glad to have you continue my endeavors, Lomonosov said. Ivan told him at once that he refused. At this reaction from Ivan, Mikhail Lomonosov laughed and said to him, She, too, firmly refused what was not to her liking. You look just like your mom. It would be nice if I could watch you grow up with Suyan. Dad continued to say. Ivan asked him, Then why? But he did not continue his question aloud, only mentally. In a word, one thing. You can't tell from his face that he has those regrets. I'm sure if he went back in time, he'd do the same thing. He stared at his father. He didn't understand him, and asked with a smile, um, Nothing, Yvonne replied, and was angry at himself for hesitating all the time, and mentally concluded, As before, I have no reason to see this man. Now his father recommended that he use his brain. He warned that one day there would come a day when he would need strength. Yvonne is still the same, refusing the power to trample others. He said he didn't need that kind of power. Who knows? Who knows? That kind of power comes in handy for protection. You can never be sure of anything, son. Sometimes things happen that you don't expect, said the father to his son. The next words Yvonne didn't expect to hear were, Like that mark on your neck, for example. Yvonne shuddered and thought, Oh, I can see a mob boss right away. Reminds me of someone. Then he noticed a strange man who was wearing a hat, but no face could be seen. He seemed to be following them the whole time. 
That man is somehow tense. His steps are so precise, as if at a certain angle. Yvonne thought about it. No, I guess I'm just hypersensitive. There's a mafia around, and my nerves are a little jumpy. He wanted to get away from this and get his thoughts together. But the man was getting closer to him, and Yvonne heard a rustling sound. He turned toward the sound. That man pointed a gun at him, saying, Die, Lomonosov! A gunshot. Everything happened so quickly that Yvonne didn't even have time to think about the situation. The people hearing the sound of gunfire turned to them and fussed. Some shouted and others said they heard gunshots. There's a person. Blood. Yvonne heard voices. He shuddered and turned back. On the ground lay his wounded father. His cane fell beside him, and the bullet hit Mikhail Lomonosov. The bullet grazed his right axillary region, and his condition was serious. Despite this, the wounded man asked his son, Yvonne, Are you... are you... hurt? Yvonne moved closer to him and replied, I... I'm fine. I'll call an ambulance. Don't say anything. To which Chief Lomonosov said the following words, You're in one piece. That's the most important thing. The son trembled when he saw his father seriously bleeding. Not only was there blood on the injured man's clothes, but he was already lying in a pool of blood. Yvonne lingered a little longer. He didn't know what to do or how to help him. All he could say was, to... He pulled himself together, turned around at the people and shouted loudly, Somebody, somebody call an ambulance. The man is in serious condition. Then Yvonne turned to Michael again and said to the men, I beg you, this, this is my father. At that time, Dimitri was sunbathing carefree in the sun. He was lying on the sunbeds and listening to music on his headphones. After a couple moments, his relaxation and listening to music was interrupted by a phone call. He picked up the phone. Oh, bingo. I guess he was happy to hear the news. Caesar turned to him and interrogated him. Lomonosov received a gunshot wound. He was surprised at this. Caesar's co-worker came to him with this news and answered his question. Yes, they say the attack took place on Main Street. Caesar sighed and said that this was not a good situation. In the current situation, there's a good chance that the Sergei family will be blamed. Maybe there really is someone among the leadership who disobeyed my orders and decided to be arbitrary, Caesar speculated. I warned you. And what kind of dog dared? Caesar asked himself. He was angry, of course. What about Lomonosov's son? He decided to ask. He was told, they say, he sits with him and doesn't go anywhere. I see. There was disappointment and sadness in his voice. Caesar remembered Dimitri's words as he said, that lawyer will leave you and go away. He wondered, was everything really a lie? From the beginning? He couldn't believe it before. At the hospital, they put in an IV. It dulls and drips slowly with a sound. A wounded father lies in a hospital room. Next to him is his son who won't leave his side. Yvonne thought for a moment. Twice already, the man next to me has been shot. He felt guilty about that. And I couldn't do anything again, he said mentally, and remembered how his father had pulled Yvonne away from the bullet with his cane. And Lomonosov himself stepped forward and purposely hit the bullet, fencing his son. Ivan makes me ask myself even more questions. Why is this happening again? I just wanted to pass on Mom's will. He entered the ocean of his thoughts. He sat in the middle of this ocean feeling guilty. He has no good memories associated with this man. What is he accomplishing by doing such an absurd and stupid thing? He asked himself these questions. What am I hoping for? It's all too... He was literally drowning in the ocean of guilt of his thoughts. He covered his face with his hands and thought about the situation even more. If I stay here, he'll grab me even if I don't want him to, right? He kept remembering more and more of the past moments. I thought I wouldn't hesitate, but in the end, it didn't turn out that way. If I continue to do the same, I'd really be a traitor to Caesar and I don't want that. Yvonne watched his sleeping father who was the cause of all this chaos. Then the way out. But suddenly Mikhail Lomonosov's eyes flickered. He opened his eyes. Yvonne noticing this asked, Have you come to your senses? The father replied that the noise had woken him up. Yvonne explained to him what had happened. Immediately after the incident you were taken to the hospital. Now they have moved you home. The workers are guarding the neighborhood so it's a little noisy. My goodness, it's just a gunshot wound. The guts of today's youth are too much. Don't you think so? Lomonosov asked him. And he only replied, Everyone is just desperate to protect you, father. But inside, he doesn't know why he's saying it. Lomonosov thought that Ivan would be unharmed by being by his side. He thought that his power was already enough for that. But it looks like I've gotten cocky, he said and smiled at his son. Leaning toward him, Ivan exhaled and replied, Since you're awake, I'll get the doctor. Suddenly, the door was thrown open loudly and widely with the words, State of Lomonosov. 
A man came to his bedside, blonde, with a beard and a little worried about him. You've regained consciousness. Dear God, thank you. Stop fussing about such trivial matters, Lomonosov replied calmly. Then, the same man abruptly changed his voice and spoke ominously. How dare anyone even dare point a gun at you? Yvonne shuddered at this reaction. He also thought that he would be first on the list to the other world if the man found out that his father had gotten hurt protecting him. Most likely while I was unconscious, you've already taken care of everything. Mikhail Lomonosov looked at the man and also ominously asked, Who is the culprit? Who was behind it? The man put his hand on his chest, bowed slightly, and replied, Ah, uh, I was just coming to report it. Yvonne involuntarily stood up from his seat when he heard those words. It turned out that the incident was indeed planned by the Sergeyev family. Michael looked at him and didn't react in any way, as if he knew about it beforehand. This news took Yvonne by surprise. He clearly didn't expect it from Caesar, his Caesar. At this time, the king sat pensively in his dark study. He covered his face with his hand and said bitterly, None of this could have been a lie. I still believe it. That's why. Come back to me. At Lomonosov's house, still dripping IVs. The father said to his son with a smile, You must be tired, so go back. The hospital is for the sick. The healthy don't belong here. Yvonne thought in his mind that when he smiled like that, you couldn't tell he was mafia. His mom must have fallen for that smile. Noticing this, Mikhail asked, Why are you looking like that? The son replied that he was thinking. I can't, Yvonne replied shortly. His father didn't know what he meant at first. You can't? Lomonosov interrogated him. Lowering his head down, Yvonne replied, Leading such a lifestyle, I'm not sure I can stand it. I pondered if it would work out for me. Expectedly, but no. I grew up ordinary. This kind of environment is too much for me. But his words were interrupted by his father. But, but there's me. I'll do anything, so if you just stick around. Lomonosov grabbed Ivan's hand and uttered, I need you, son. I'm sorry. Ivan replied shortly and clearly. Even putting feelings aside, the facts remained. He's his father. There's no changing that. Nor would it change the fact that he was the boss of the Lomonosovs. There was clearly despair on his father's face. If Yvonne stays here, not only will she betray Caesar, but she will increase the friction between these two. Yvonne thinks that if he leaves, everything will go back to normal. So he decides to inform his father. I've finished all my business in Russia. It's time to leave. I was glad we met. He held his father's hand. Mikhail Lomonosov did not think about the imminent departure of his son. He kept silent for a while. His throat seemed to constrict. With a fist of will, he decided to, letting my son go. Okay, go. And hugged him goodbye. I'm letting you go. But son, remember, this is the first and last time. The day I find you again, I won't let you go again. With the words, the father squeezed his son tightly. Yvon awkwardly got up from his seat and said, Well, I'll be going. And walked towards the exit. Lomonosov was watching him. He lowered his eyes and couldn't say anything more to his son. Yvonne left the room and the door slammed one last time. A beautiful fountain was working in the street of the Sergeyev's house, and the weather was nice. Over all this view, Caesar was watching from outside the window. Dimitri's voice is heard behind him saying, In the end, this is how it all turned out. He sat behind Caesar and reminded him with a smile. Well, not to say I didn't see something like this coming, but... He snapped his fingers and continued. If I had known... I would have bet at least a million rubles. Caesar turned to him and asked menacingly, What do you mean? Dimitri stood up abruptly from his seat and slammed his hands on Caesar's desk. His eyes were like those of a maniac, and he immediately said, Our bet, my victory. That lawyer guy looks like he's going to leave Russia. Dimitri told him the latest news. There was no face on Caesar's, he interjected. Dimitri also added that he was still traveling by train, and noted that it was a bit simple for the son of a mafia boss. I told you that Degenerate would betray you and get away with it, he reminded Caesar with a smirk on his face. Dimitri took a step toward his brother and spoke, saying it was likely the lawyer wouldn't be back. Throwing himself upon him, he said to him in a gloating voice, You have been ditched, Caesar. Caesar was furious at his brother's words. He shoved Dimitri back and ducked away from him. The Tsar turned away and put on his outer garments. Dimitri looked behind him and touched himself where he had just been struck. Dimitri patted his clothes and simply said with a smirk, Hmm. Caesar left and his brother dialed someone's number. The king is out, uh-huh, uh-huh, of course. He was talking to someone on the phone. Turning to the open window from which Caesar's car could be seen, he uttered, I told him about the lawyer and he galloped away at once. I'm sure the Tsar and Lomonosov are connected. Dimitri said he thought there was no point in stalling. They've given them enough chances. You don't want a head who doesn't know Russian pride, do you? Dimitri hummed and said, It's raining, 
At the station, Yvon is waiting for his train. He calls Caesar several times, but he doesn't pick up. Yvon finished another call. He had the king listed as psychopath. Eh, and I wanted to at least hear his voice before I left. I didn't say goodbye to Nikolai and my grandmother, he said a little sadly. How many calls is this? He still hadn't been able to figure it out properly. If Yvon didn't make it now, he couldn't make any more calls. I know how stupid it is to leave so suddenly, but, he thought. On the other hand, if he got involved again, this again, he remembered Caesar's words. I'll believe anything. In the rain, all these thoughts were even more depressing. Shit, we have to meet and convince him. Yvon had just decided to act, but he noticed a familiar figure. Turning in that direction, he considered her. It was Caesar. His dark and huge figure was visible from afar. It was not difficult to recognize. Yvon involuntarily rose from his seat and uttered, Caesar. Toth strode over to meet him. Yvonne asks why he's here. Caesar, wait, I have to say, he began to say, as a quick shot interrupted his words and stunned him. The bullet hit Yvonne's shoulder, second bullet, in the knee. Yvonne could do nothing but shout, Stop! His eyes went to his body. He soon fell to the ground. Even closer to him came the king. Shadow covering Yvonne, Caesar stopped in front of him. The man was holding onto his wounded shoulder. Yvonne was able to speak to him. I wanted to call. The king hummed. Yes, of course, he replied with a wicked grin. The muzzle of the gun pointed at Yvonne. The king told him one last time. But now... It's not necessary. You're the one who made me this way. And there was another loud gunshot. Caesar took Yvonne to his house. They secluded themselves and began to work things out in bed. A week has passed. Further business takes place in Lomonosov's mansion. Someone came into the office where Mikhail was sitting. It was the sniper who was hunting the king with Yvonne. He said with a smile, I heard you were looking for me. Mikhail Lomonosov faced the window and replied, So you are Leonard, the one who will do anything if he can get paid. Thoth shrugged cheerfully and said, Well, for the most part it is. We need to find one person, Lomonosov said. A picture of the person to be found was placed on the table. Still also, Michael, standing with his back to Leonard, said, This is my son. He suddenly disappeared a week ago. Looking at the photo, Leonard asked, You say he's your son? And remembered that this guy was also... He said he was leaving the country, but his name is not on any air or sea flights, Mikhail said. Yvonne was pictured in the photo. Nevertheless, we found a witness who saw a man dragging my son into the car. I'm sure it was Sergev's heir. I'll pay whatever it takes, so find my son. Now, Mikhail Lomonosov commanded. Leonard hummed and remembered those two. Those two back then. What an interesting turn of events. Mikhail added, and one more thing, looking finally at the sniper, he ominously commanded him. As soon as you find my son, immediately dispose of the heir of Sergev. Yvonne woke up in the same cozy room. His whole body ached. He hovered with that thought. Yvonne mumbled something under his breath that sounded like, This is the first time I've ever felt this awful in my entire life. I can't even walk straight. So he just left me in my room and walked away. He's not going to be able to escape anyway. I've been here for ten days. If Mikhail suddenly finds out about this, he began to think of his father. Closing his eyes back, Yvonne spoke further. He'll want to kill Caesar. A whole war could break out because of me. I didn't want to get involved with these people anymore. The light from the window fell on his eyes. He opened them anyway. The view from the window was very beautiful. It was snowing and the street was all white. He wondered, it was definitely cold outside. Even so, slowly getting up from his seat, Yvonne wanted to go outside. He put his first foot on the ground. It was painful for him to move in any way. With a little groan, he rose to his feet and stepped toward the exit. At this time, Caesar was buttoning his cufflinks while simultaneously talking to someone on the phone. Ah, uh, I'm aware of that. I'll be there soon. I don't know, about an hour. I think it's snowing. Suddenly, he noticed something and froze in place. Through his window, he saw Yvon almost naked, but in a robe pacing in the snow. No shoes. He was obviously cold in such freezing weather. Then Caesar replied to his interlocutor. Though no, I think it will be in about two hours. Yvon stepped once more into the snow with his bare feet. How had he not frozen his limbs off yet? Holding his hand to his stomach, he paced on and on. In the sub-zero temperature, the exhalation was like hot steam. Raising her head slightly, Yvon watches this moment. Looking up at the sky, he thought it felt like his lungs were clearing right now. Behind him, he heard a squelch. Someone was striding toward him. It was Caesar, his coat in his hand. He asked him if his feet were cold. Yvonne turned to him and, looking into his eyes, stated, I wasn't trying to escape. Caesar's hand trembled. He replied to Yvonne that he would not have been able to because in his condition it was impossible. He added that he would not shoot again. 
suggesting that it would be better to just have fun. Yvonne gawked in response and said, You're the only one having fun here. With a charming face and a quick movement, Caesar threw a warm coat over Yvonne with the words, Well agree, it's better to have at least one having fun than none. Caesar was already touching his face with his hands. Yvonne thought of a plan. Should I put snow in his mouth? Further leaning in, Caesar attempted to kiss an emotionless Yvonne. Their lips made contact. Yvonne didn't even move. Caesar kissed him, gently and tongue-tied. The other didn't like it, as he hadn't yet been able to forget past events. Thought you'd at least bite your tongue. Caesar was surprised at his beau's reaction. He only asked him sullenly, Did you expect it to go your way? This took Caesar by surprise. He was silent for a few seconds. But further, he just laughed out loud. Bah! He couldn't stop, and at once he was laughing loudly throughout the yard of the house. This made Yvon even more angry. He couldn't understand what was wrong or why he laughed. When he was about to ask him, Caesar abruptly grabbed him and fell to the ground with him. Yvonne lay in Caesar's wide and strong arms on his chest and listened to his words. There's a leadership meeting today. Won't take long. Caesar looked satisfied and calm. I'll be done quickly, I... Caesar said. Yvonne just lay there and listened in silence. Noticing this, Caesar was silent for seconds. Closing his eyes, he took a deep breath and finished, I'll be back. Everyone had already gathered in the management meeting room. Dimitri stood up and greeted his brother cheerfully. Hey, Tsar, come in quickly. He pointed to a chair near the start and said it was a chair for the king. Don't talk nonsense. The king replied simply. Then clapping his hands together, Dimitri said, So, now that everyone is here, let's start the meeting. Having finished his speech, he sat down in his seat. Opposite him sat a man with a mustache. It was Tyuchev. He hummed ominously and uttered, Great. There was a feast on the table. Sweets, delicious food, fruit. The assembled people drank their drinks. Caesar too, having drunk the contents of his glass, set it down. Dimitri poured him another drink and talked at the same time. You've been so depressed lately, but now you seem fine. Everyone was just talking, he said. That you did the right thing by taking out that lawyer who was hovering around you. What's more? I heard he turned out to be Lomonosov's secret son. Dmitri finished and smiled weakly. The people sitting next to him began to support him. Nothing can be done about the Lomonosovs. After all, this is a gathering of non-Russians. Another said, That's right. This is no place for any pathetic mixtures who can't understand the meaning of pure blood. A bunch of non-Russians? Disgrace us with this tall... But Caesar did not let him finish and said firmly, Enough. The cheerful Dimitri only added oil to the fire. Come on, why are you sitting there with such a stone face? It's the truth, isn't it? Suddenly he looked coldly at Caesar and uttered, That that lawyer is half-breed scum. Before you didn't care no matter what I said. Why the sudden drastic change? Dimitri, his brother called out. You say anything like that again and I'll rip out your fucking tongue. Dimitri said that he didn't seem to have learned that it was wrong to insult others. Caesar replied that he hadn't, and neither had he actually. Moreover, they have their rules, we have ours, said Sergev's successor, but he was interrupted by Tiochev. And what are our rules? To sit idly by and tolerate, or bow our heads before non-Russians? One of those sitting there tried to calm him down, saying, Why are you doing this? The king just meant that we should be careful. But not here. Tiochev was out of his mind. He got angry and thumped the table in front of him loudly. He shouted, Yes, because of this caution, our whole organization is now in jeopardy. How are you going to be held accountable for this? If you keep doing things that don't coincide with the Sergeev's main goal, I'll have to contact Sasha. The last words sounded like threats. The Tsar was angry at this behavior of his own men and holding his hand to his forehead said, Undoubtedly, killing and causing trouble is not the main purpose of the Sergeyevs. I encountered it, and I told you that it's fine, so just put that incident behind you. That's exactly why I feel sorry for you, Tsar. Dmitri's voice was suddenly heard. The knife that had suddenly appeared in his cousin's hand pierced sharply into the left side of Caesar's abdomen. The chair he had just been sitting on fell to the ground with a clatter. With a knife in his stomach, the Tsar could barely stand on his feet and held onto the knife without taking it out. He uttered to Dmitri, You. Dimit. Before he could finish the word, blood came into his mouth. The Tsar was choking on his own blood. A slight hesitation and Caesar looked at him with a slaying gaze and spoke out. Dimitri. You. Even. You. The king grabbed his brother's shoulder with his hand as he mouthed the last words. As his brother slowly slid down, Dimitri in turn answered him. I told you, didn't I? He whispered the following words to the dying king. That I can do anything for money. After the walk, Yvon went to the house where he was. He seemed to have gone back to sleep as soon as he got home. Yvonne twisted and turned in bed. 
Finally opening his eyes, he asked himself, Did I fall asleep? He had a headache. Holding his head, he uttered, Apparently Caesar hasn't shown up yet. Ha-ha, uh, the pain won't go away. I can't keep lying in bed. Looking at his hand, he hesitated. Then lowering it, Yvonne quietly said, I just want to just drop everything to hell. But he doesn't understand exactly what it is. Does he want to stay by his side or leave? Grasping his heart, he wondered, If I run away again, will you definitely shoot me in the heart? Then, Yvonne wondered what his face would look like at that moment. His thoughts were interrupted by the sound of a fast car pulling up to the house. Already here? Yvonne thought it was Caesar. He started looking for his clothes. He has this look from this morning, that he doesn't want to show his poor health. He opened the closet, and there were only Caesar's clothes. He snorted unhappily. Do you want me to wear his clothes? You're not doing anything. Are you hiding my clothes somewhere? He pulled out Caesar's white shirt and his pants. So tight he tightened his belt. Caesar's clothes were big for him. After changing his clothes, he left the room. Looking around, he wondered, By the way, kind of weird. He walks down the stairs and further thinks, It was quiet here before, of course, but now it's as if no one is here at all. Where are the butler and the others? Yvonne suddenly turned toward the exit. He shuddered and froze. The door swung wide open with a whoosh. A storm of snow seemed to break in. But it was Dimitri who broke in. Smiling broadly and looking at Yvonne, he said, Found it. So this is where you've been hiding, Mr. Lawyer, he said caustically. Yvonne hadn't expected to see him here. You... Dimitri said that Yvonne seemed disappointed, and asked if he was expecting someone. Why are you here? Caesar isn't here. Contact him later and meet him separately. Yvonne informed him firmly. Later? Dimitri interjected, and snapped his fingers in an instant. Several men in black suits appeared behind him. They were cleaning out the house. They packed things, put them in boxes, removed furniture, and so on. What are you doing? Yvonne didn't have time to ask before Dimitri's hand swung toward him. Dimitri roughly took Yvonne by the jaw and shoved him into the wall with a clatter. Hey, how do you like the smell of your lover's blood? Dimitri snorted. He was grinning like a madman. What? What kind of bullshit? Yvonne didn't finish, but his assailant was still pressing on his jaw. Suddenly, Yvonne found traces of blood on Dimitri's hand that he was holding him with. He hysterically tried to think rationally, but he failed. It's blood. Who's... Realizing his thoughts, Dimitri hummed once more and said that Caesar wasn't coming. Never. Those words put Yvonne in shock. What? 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 Do you mean? Never coming? Is that Caesar's blood? So he... His heart beat faster and faster at that thought. Remembering the last sight of his lover, he spoke his name. Caesar. Ah, uh -uh. Dimitri let go of his hand and thought for a moment. What a beautiful face. He looked at the face of the frightened Yvonne. Moving his hand toward Yvonne, he smilingly continued his fantasies. I want to scoop your head off and store it behind glass. Yvonne was trembling and couldn't move. Dimitri grabbed his cheeks. He reached for his captive's lips, whispering to him. The lover who will protect you is gone. Will you spread your legs before me and beg for mercy? And in the next second, he was on Yvonne's lips. Forcing him into the kiss only made him think about what was happening. This guy despises me. Dimitri finished kissing and let go of Yvonne a little, asking, M? Without getting lost, Yvonne swung his leg sharply and kicked his assailant. Dimitri didn't seem to have expected this from the recent patient. He falls to the ground with a clatter, and other people rush towards him. Taking advantage of this moment, Yvonne ran to his room, quickly closed the door, pushed the nightstand in front of the door. He was worried that he wouldn't be able to escape, and if he got caught, it would be worse than it was now. He looked around and tried to think of something. I won't get far in this condition. What's more, 100% of the people outside have guns. We have to think of something. At this time, they had already found Yvonne and were clicking the doorknob. Boom! And the door creaked open. It had been shot through. Dimitri entered the room saying, You think you can escape easily? What? And flicked menacingly the automatic in his hand with which he jimmied the lock of the door. He looked into the room, but there was no Yvonne. The window was open, so he must have made it outside. Dimitri quickly told him to catch him. Yvonne stepped through the snowdrifts, limping slightly. A heavy snowstorm was whistling, and it was correspondingly hard for him to breathe. He was not wearing any outer clothing. He was certainly cold. If he was captured, it would be a matter of time before he was killed. He decided he needed to find shelter. Looking around the forest, he didn't know where to take shelter. Where? Where to go to escape? He suddenly froze. He found something! In the middle of the snow was a shelter made of stone. Yvonne would fit in there, and he was unlikely to be found there. He quickly dived in and immediately heard Dimitri, who was already near, singing, A rabbit in a rabbit hole, I'll catch it. It'll be a pelt for me, snowy white rabbit. 
Abruptly, Dimitri bulged his eyes and shouted at the top of his voice, Found it! Yvonne shuddered with fear and thought he had been found out, and Dimitri picked up a real white rabbit that happened to be nearby. His men approached him and reported, Mr. Dimitri, his direction is unknown. The storm has blown the tracks away. Hmm, is that so? Well, it can't be helped. Let's go then, Dimitri said. He stood directly above Yvonne's hiding place and spoke in a final menacing voice. Next time we meet, we should still skin him. Yvonne pulled his hand out of the mountain of snow after a couple minutes. He slowly made his way out of hiding, asking himself in parallel, Ka, huh? Gone? He probably saw me, but just decided to play dumb to torture me longer. He's completely out, and now he's shivering from the cold. First, we need to... somewhere. Hide. He barely spoke. Suddenly, Yvonne feels a nagging pain in her leg, near her knees. The wound is bleeding. He lost his balance and fell to the ground. He was in immense pain. He started rambling a bit. Caesar isn't coming. What the? Slowly closing her eyes, Yvonne thinks that this can't be true. Because after all, he had said back in the morning, that will come back. As he said this, he saw a shadow in the midst of such a blizzard and storm. Someone crisply moved closer to him and stopped. Yvonne was lying next to the shoes of a stranger who, upon seeing him, recognized him immediately. Mr. Yvonne, 